is going to be awesome. It's Monday night football. Monday night football, first game back. I know the kids are really excited. Um, you know, COVID's been hard on everybody. So just to have people in the stands and, and us to go out and compete underneath the lights, you know, I don't think I played a night game when I was here. So I think it'll be pretty cool to be out there with the guys. They've been working really, really hard. Um, so I know everybody's excited about Monday. You do have that knowledge from your time playing here. What has it been like, you know, coming in at such a strange time? You know, I'm sure you're feeling a lot of love on social media, but, you know, to really get that first opportunity to, to kind of breathe in a, a live sporting experience that we haven't had in over a year. Yeah, I mean, it's been it's been a long time for me, you know, where it's coming from, it was a limited amount of fans, but I think it's good. You know, I think it's more for the kids. I think, you know, I think they want to be in front of their parents and their peers playing and, and showing the improvement that we've made since the beginning of the spring. Um, I think it's cool for our families, the ones that are in town to be able to come back and embrace themselves in the community. Um, so I think it's an awesome idea that coach came with, you know, Monday night, not a lot of teams play spring games Monday night underneath the lights on TV. So I think it's going to be a really cool experience for everybody and everyone involved. Thanks, George. Hey, George, uh, Brian Hightower and Kamari Thompson are, are two guys we saw a little bit of last year that transferred in last summer. What have you seen from them and what do they bring to the field for you? I mean, both of them are really competitive. You know, Brian's done a really good job making contested catches. Kamari's done a good job being consistent. Um, and I think that's kind of the whole group. You know, they, every day we've gotten a little bit better at something different. And and those two guys have been really, really, um, really, really good guys of just in terms of every day getting better at something. We're not where we need to be, but, you know, they're not making the same mistakes. And every day one of them is, is making a play with Donnie Navarro. And Carlos Sandy had an awesome, awesome play um, on Saturday. Uh, James Frenchy is doing a nice job. So I've been really pleased with just the day-to-day the -day development of those guys as we've continued to go through the spring. And you, um, now Tony and Brett, have all mentioned Donnie Navarro. Um, what were your initial impressions of him, and what has he shown you this spring? I mean, Donnie was probably one of the first guys in my office when I got here, and he was sending me videos of him working out, and that's who he's been. I mean, he comes to work every day. He, he's very competitive. You know, he handles his business on and off the field. So that's the one thing. With Donnie, you know what you're going to get. And he's, he's done a great job of just being the same guy every day, making plays for the quarterbacks and being ultra competitive. So I've been really, really excited to work with him every day. Thanks, George. Appreciate it. Coach, I'm curious about rotation. Um, you know, I, I know some of that will come from the offensive coordinator, but how deep do you like to go with your receivers? Do you want to have, you know, four guys ready for a Saturday? Do you want to have eight guys you know you can turn to? Uh, how, how do you see player rotation? I mean, the rotation is going to, you know, pretty much dictate what happens in fall camp. You know, in my past, I've I've had three receivers that played every play, and I've had, you know, last year we had six guys that rotated every other series. So I think the rotation is always predicated on the number of reliable and dependable players that you could put out there. Um, obviously, the more players we could play, the better. It throws more guys at the defense. It makes them um, tired more because usually the secondary doesn't rotate as much, and it it keeps our guys fresher for the second half of games. Um, but that'll be something, you know, we're still trying to get better for practice nine. So that'll be something that uh, we'll have to take care of once we get into fall camp. And do you like having a number one guy, you know, previous wide receiver coaches have said, I'm, I'm still trying to find my alpha, my guy that leads everything. Do you, do you look for that? Are you, are you looking for the number one? No, I'm looking for good football players. You know, everybody has different personalities. What I look for is to try to get three guys out there. When the quarterback throws them the ball, we catch it and we make something happen. So I'm not worried about who's one, who's two, who's three. Um, you know, I tell guys all the time, you know, you got to check your ego at the door. And at the end of the season, at the end of the year, the stats are going to be the stats. But right now we're trying to find ways to catch the ball and win games and, and compete every day. So at the end of the day, whoever's out there, we, we all want them to be number ones. You know, you never send anyone out there and say, hey, you're the third option. So we all want everybody to think they're the number one receiver or tight end or running back. You know, I mean, if the ball's in your hands, you're the number one guy, because if you carry the ball, you carry us all. And, and that's the most important thing in our program. So we just want good football players who will protect the ball and, and keep moving the chains like get us some points. Okay, thanks, Coach. Hey, George, um, another guy who's recently come to your room. I know we've talked in the past about Caleb Griffin coming in, but now with Marquez <clears throat> Beeson being in, excuse me, as well. Uh, what have you seen from him and uh, how has he helped to uh, maybe change up the room at all? I mean, Beeson's an interesting guy. You know, I, I did some research when, when coach mentioned it. Um, he's very, very talented. He's very, very smart. I think that's the biggest thing 
in the meeting rooms, like he brings a diff defensive mentality in terms of understanding what the defense is trying to do, understanding what the coverages are. So he's been able to help guys see the, the, the field from a different perspective. I've, I've really enjoyed working with him. Um, so I'm excited to continue to see, you know, how he can add, add some depth to our, to our receiver room. I think what we were told was that he, he requested that move to, to wide receiver. What, what were the initial conversations like between you and him as far as uh, him telling you why he wanted to come over and what he had hoped to provide for, for that group? Well, I think him and Coach B had a conversation, and I just think it was one of those where he saw an opportunity maybe to get on the field a little bit sooner or just something that was more natural to him. Um, I know he might have been recruited as a receiver here then switched to DB, so I just think it was one of those things that the, the receiver position was drawn on his heartstrings. And the one thing that, you know, Coach B's done, and, and to his credit, whether it's a coach or a, or a player, he's trying to get everybody in the best position to help Illinois win football games. And, you know, he saw, he saw uh, Beeson and he said, hey, go over there, give it a shot, and, and see where we go from there. Thank you, George. Hey, George, I'm curious, in this offensive system, ideally, what do you guys need out of that slot position? Is it someone who can, you know, with speed, is it consistency in, in terms of, you know, just getting open? What's ideal for you guys there? I mean, I think it's pretty consistent. And, you know, obviously, I think at any receiver spot, you got to catch the ball, you got to get open, and you got to be able to block. And I think those, now the way you get open is different from the slot to the outside because you usually don't have as much press coverage. Um, but at the end of the day, you're, you know, your slot receiver usually has to be the guy that controls the middle of the field, um, has to be fearless in terms of going across the middle and knowing he's going to get hit. Most of his catches are going to be contact catches in some type of way. So I think the biggest difference between an outside receiver and a slot receiver in our offense is just they have to be able to catch the ball in traffic. And, you know, and that's the thing that we've been working on a lot this spring. And then a guy whose name kind of comes up kind of regularly is Dale Von Campbell. You just kind of hear him here and there. What have your impressions been of him? What's he shown you in the first nine practices? Dale Von, he, you know, he's a big physical guy. You know, he's playing outside for us, you know, so he's doing a lot of the battling for jump balls and one-on-one and -on -one balls, and he's done a nice job. You know, I think the biggest thing that Coach B's challenged us all is just every day come back and be your best. And, and that's the one thing that he's tried to do. Um, and that's what we've all tried to do at the wide receiver position. But he's done a nice job of continuing day to day, get better at things that we're trying to incorporate and understand in the offense. Thanks, George. George, how far behind is a summer arrival going to be with, with what you guys have implemented already this spring? Or can you feel like you can bring somebody up to speed that, that might arrive summer and could be could be an impact player? No, I think anyone that's still coming in in the summer can definitely help us. You know, I think. You know, with like how we're doing virtual interviews, you know, we've been doing virtual conversations and virtual playbooks and talking to those guys and watching film. So I think um, the one thing about COVID is shown that you don't have to do a lot of face to face stuff like you can use a technology that's out there to to meet and have worldwide meetings. So I think the guys that are going to be able to come in in the summer will have the same opportunities. They might not have the physical reps, but they would definitely have the mental reps to to go out and get their feet wet. Since you brought it up, I guess my follow-up is, what do you think will carry over from the COVID world that we're, we're still living in, in terms of meetings and whatnot? Or do you feel like everything, do you feel like most of it or every bit of it will get scrapped once we start to have more face-to-face? -face? Or, or do you feel like some stuff can carry over as we, as we go forward? I think a lot will carry over. Like, obviously, everyone wants to be face-to-face. -face. Like, we would love to see our, our, our guys more and our recruits and stuff like that. But I also think that this world has opened up where you can use FaceTime, Zoom, and have have um, conversations and meetings at non-traditional times. You know, I mean, sometimes when you want to face to face, everybody has to line up at the same time. But obviously, we're having a, a Zoom interview at 4:15, and everyone's doing different things at different places. So it's just, at least from my mind, it's opened up the ability to recruit a nation. You know, it's opened up the, the world to find a good player, a good receiver, and no matter what the time zone is, if they get internet, we can have a meeting and we can show them a slide, walk them through the facility and stuff like that. So I just think I wasn't very aware or in tune to the technology available till COVID. And it's kind of been awesome just seeing it and seeing how you can use it at a high level. Thanks, George. Appreciate it. That's good. You got follow-ups? Anybody? Yeah, I got a, I got a quick follow-up. Uh, I'm curious, um, you know, this is philosophy based as well. Um, some receiver coaches and, and some guys planning out passing attacks like to split their receivers and these are the split ends these are my flankers these are my slot guys and they stay there others like to uh, this guy can move in in this certain formation 
how do you approach that? Do you approach three, four, maybe positions, or do you do you like to you know move you guys around? I like to move them around. I like to kind of teach it holistically, big picture, get everybody to understand what we're trying to do, and and let everybody play every position. And then as we get into game plans, we're able to move pe people around to get the best matchups. Like, you know, Donnie is a great slot receiver, but right now he's been playing outside receiver because he's so smart and he has the ability to function on the perimeter. So we've been able from week to week, just pick a guy and say, hey, you're going to go into the slot. You're going to go outside um, just because you never know what's going to happen, especially in this in this time. So everybody has to have some position flexibility. And it's like they say, the more you can do, the more you can play, the more positions you can you can learn and be able to function at, you know, the more opportunities you're going to get on the football field. So a lot of guys have really tried to embrace that. And it just helps the knowledge and the growth of our offense. And it helps us grow faster by more guys being able to play more than one spot. Got it. Thanks. Hey, George, I just had a big picture follow up. Um, I know you really respect Brett, obviously, to come here. And I know you want to be a head coach someday. So. What, what are the biggest things you've taken away from him about running a program or, or what stood out most to you um, that you've learned over the last four months or so? I think the biggest thing, and there's been so many, but just the way he communicates, you know, I mean, I've always been able to talk to him openly without working with them, but just the way he communicates, whether it's, you know, a player that might have an issue or a coach, or I just learned, you know, the way he communicates and, and he's always saying like, it's not what happens is how you react to it. And he, and he's, you know, we haven't had a game or anything like that, but I've just learned every day the way he communicates with our staff, our players, our support staff, and treats everybody with utmost respect. Like it's been awesome and, and things I've tried to pattern myself after that and just in terms of the way I, I approach people and, and talk to them. Thanks, George. That's all good. Awesome. Mr. Tate, it's good to see you again. I haven't seen you in a long time. I'm disappointed you didn't ask me a question, Mr. Tate. <laughs> I got a question for you, George. You ready? It's already cut off. <laughs> uh, how do you how are you going to mesh uh, uh, your offense uh, Monday when you're trying to conceal everything from Nebraska and yet you want to find out as much as you can about your players? How are you going to work that Monday? I think we might put in the wishbone. Just you know, I don't know. <laughs> I think the spring game is kind of it's 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 a balance, right? You're always trying to you know it's it's another practice where you want to get good, but you don't want to show all your stuff. So. I'll leave those secrets to um, to Ryan and, and Tony. They can they can come up with those master plans. I'm just praying my guys catch it so you you'll talk to me after the game. All right, thanks, George.